Felix here, and happy Inflation Day, happy Unemployment Day, happy Crypto Meltdown Day. That's everything that's going on here this morning and much, much more. Futures are actually looking optimistic at the moment. We're up about a third, a half a percent on the NASDAQ, a third of a percent on the S&P. Volatility down a touch, the dollar up a little bit, which is usually not a bit of an ominous sign. And orange juice futures are down, which is the number you've all been waiting for. I know it. Get your hands on the 100 top NASDAQ stocks, the QQQ essentially, every single stock in it, full benchmark, full key data, everything you need to know from ROIC to earnings per share to forward-looking PE to institutional holdings, all that stuff. You will own quite a few of these stocks, so get your pause on it. Felix Ranzalog slash NASDAQ, only available for an extra day, and it's free. Isn't that marvelous? So get your hands on that. And of course, none of the following is financial advice. Everything you hear here is straight from the mouth of a golden retriever. Uh, so always bear that in mind uh, when you listen to me. Uh, our mission here is to make you a better investor. That's really the whole point. Uh, we've got about a second until the inflation numbers come out. This is crypto this week. Bitcoin down 18%, Ethereum down 21%. Uh, lots of melt up, melt down there. But which is today actually recovering a bit. This is today. 9% up on Ethereum. So it was much worse. BNB USD is up 106%. Okay. Uh, so should we look at the numbers? Let's look at the numbers. And we got the jobless data out, but not yet the inflation data. The Labor Department lot are a bit slow. It takes them a little bit while. What's the CPI here? CPI 298, that's a little higher than previous. Inflation rate is coming in at 7.7%, right? Strap on the rocket fuel. We're going to go, we're going to go up. We're going to go up. Core inflation, 6.3%. We were expecting 6.5 last month for 6.6. What does that mean? That means the market is going to have a bonanza, a bit of a party. Pop the champagne corks. I know it's early, but it's worth it. Inflation rate has come down from expectations, although flat month on month. But the core rate, this is really what uh, Jay Powell is going to be celebrating. There'll be, there'll be wild parties going on at some wood paneled mansion somewhere. And we were expecting 0. 0.5 to 0.7% core inflation a month. And we get got 0 0.3. That's massively lower. How did they manage to manipulate those numbers? Sorry, <clears throat> how did they come up with those numbers? Continuing jobless claims are approaching the 1.5 million mark, which is just what the market needs. We want high unemployment. I know we are, we are um, ethically um, challenged, handicapped. I'd say I thank, I thank the Fed for a jobless claims are also down. I mean, only a little bit, but down a little bit. Initial jobless claims are... Um, Still fairly strong, still fairly strong, but kind of in range of expectations. But we now are looking at an inflation rate with a seven in front. That's much better than an eight, isn't it? I think it's better than an eight. Um, although if you are Chinese, you might disagree. Eight is better than seven. But um, yeah, that's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's look at the QQQ here live, minute by minute, pre-market. And we are going to see something shooting up. To the moon you saw that you see that that's what happened here we went from 264 to 271 we are now up three percent pre-market which is just staggeringly optimistic probably we're going to overdo it and we're probably going to correct and come down with a little bit uh, but this is very 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 nice to see isn't it isn't it nice to have a bit of green now i looked at my options portfolio this morning i realized i only have four trades open and they were all bullish and i was thinking i really need to set up some bearish trades today because i like to be market neutral but today it's going to pay off i think once the market opens we're going to take some nice profits again on those trades. So absolutely a brilliant number. So we're going to get a Tarek. We are going to cover new earnings as well. I've got notes on that too. Um, uh, Howard, I'm glad you watched Marcel as well. I, 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 I actually dipped in briefly this morning as well. And I sent him a few nice messages. Get your green jacket out. I know. Time to get the jacket off and get the green one out on. Uh, so this is a, a, a kickoff to a bear market rally. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but don't expect it to last because the Fed isn't going to fully turn around just on this bit of data, right? One bit that's had a set of data reading isn't quite enough. That's what they're going to say to us. But it certainly gives us hope and optimism that the November numbers, which we're going to get in December before the Fed decides, the Fed meeting in December is on the 14th or something like that, 
that could be the Christmas present that we've all been waiting for. So what do you want for San from Santa this year? Santa, bring us lower inflation <laughs> numbers and higher uh, unemployment. Um, and the last part is perhaps not something you should ask Santa for. But you know what I mean. That's essentially what, what the market wants. So just to kind of summarize this, um, from a stock um, point of view, lower inflation is brilliant. Lower core inflation is absolutely brilliant. CPI is still um, obviously elevated, but initial jobless claims, it's sort of neither here nor there. Uh, the inflation rate month on month, that's a good one. That's flat core inflation. This is the number of all numbers. That's the one we really love. And then the continuing jobless claims are creeping up more than expected. So that's the real unemployment rate there. And I did a video on that a few days ago. I think unemployment numbers are cooked, quite frankly. I think you're going to see them shooting up very significantly now that elections are in. And even the jobless claims are down just a teeny weeny bit here from last month. So the first set of really big important data we've had in months that is just broadly positive across the board. You can't argue with it. You can't be like, oh, but this bit could be better or something. No, it's all flipping, flipping wonderful. Now, this is the release. Do you want to see the release? This is how they put it out. It's like it's 1986, right? Now, let's have a look at what went up and what didn't. Can we take a screenshot of this? I think we probably can. And then we have a look at where the real changes lie. Because this is important. This is what's driving the market today. We are partying. We, I, we should be changing into green jackets. Definitely a champagne breakfast, my kind of a morning at the Fed. And um, we'll have a look at the second as well, which stocks are, are flying the most on this. But expect tech and, and anything that doesn't have profits to benefit the most from this. So let's just look for the big ones that have come down the most in green. Food has declined significantly, food at home particularly. Uh, we've got um, energy inflation has picked up. That's what I forecasted yesterday. So let's make that a, a, a red number here. So energy inflation actually got worse in October. And that makes sense if you look at the commodity prices. Um, energy services, though, have come down. So what does that mean? Pipe gas. Gas prices have come down. So that's, a, that's good. Commodities, except for food and energy, also came down a lot, actually negative. Uh, new vehicles are cheaper. Used cars and trucks are basically, they're giving them away. If you walk past one of those lots, they'll just they'll just give you the keys. So just, just take it. It's free. Apparel also down 0.7% cheaper. And shelter is more expensive still, but transport coming down, that has obviously something to do with gas prices. And then medical things also coming down so if you are you know ailing but what's really shooting up well fuel oil gas energy commodities uh, are really like worsening significantly here and also shelter still going up housing market still tight but lots and lots of green there is more green in here actually this is green this is green uh that's green um that's flat so if you look at that overall everything except energy is going well which is why the core number is looking so good now what about labor market? That's going to be that's going to be the real key, really. It's like you know, what is um, what are are you spelled with it without a U, right? Um, you you can't afford the U in the US. I'm just kidding. Uh, what about salaries? Any mention of salaries in this? No, no mention of salaries. What about wages? Here we go. The consumer price index. Here we go. Wage earners. Blah blah blah. We want more on wages. No, nope. also don't talk about wages. So wages is another story that we need to watch out for to see what's going on over there, whether unions are going to drive that up. But this is pretty good stuff. You want to see whether Goldman Sachs was right? Where were they predicting the biggest drop? Transportation, they were right on that front. Used cars, they were right on that front. Apparel, I think they were largely right on that one. So new cars, they were actually wrong on that. They've also come down significantly. So good numbers. Morning extravaganza bonanza. Let's have a look at what's going up the most. So anything in the tech space is going to fly. Polestar up 6%, Xpang up 6%, Lucid up 7%. Uh, some of this has also got to do with China EV sales numbers actually being better than expected, although the NEO earnings we talk about in a second were uh, 
a little bit mixed. Meta up 5%, PayPal up 5%, Tesla up 5%. Oh my God, it's a rally. Uh, Neo up 5%, Adobe up 4.7%, Microsoft up 3%. Is anything down today? Anything down today? Well, the Trump's back. Teladoc, volatility, Snap, Pfizer, Palantir for some reason. I don't quite understand that. They should also benefit from this. Goldman's, um, Citigroup, and Verizon. And that's pretty much it. So I am going to be quite happy with my trade setup here this morning because everything I set up is actually bullish. So we're going to get to some nice profits. Take them and reset some more profits. That's what we do. Where are we up to so far this year? We're up to 111% so far on the portfolio. I do every single one of these trades, either on a live stream with you guys, or I um, I share them with you via via the, the community. Uh, I, I ping you guys so you can see exactly what it is. What did I do there? I need to select more more trades. Here we go. Uh, there, there is the full, full glory there. So Beautiful, bushy-eyed, green, lovely morning. This one needs to update itself. Uh, they're running a little bit behind. Do you want to see the stock heat map pre-market? I think that might be a nice thing to look at. Uh, we want to look at pre-market change and look at that. Look at the glory of that green. Amazon up almost 5%, having lost a trillion dollars in market cap, by the way, uh, in the last year, which is, a, which is a record. It's quite an achievement, actually. Uh, Tesla up 5%. Those are the big boys. Pepsi up 2%. Costco up. Um, I saw some of you guys are setting up Pepsi trades yesterday in, in our options community. You will have made some money this morning, which is nice to see. AMD up 5%. Meta 5%. Intuit up 5%. Netflix up 3%. It's a wonderful morning. McDonald's is down. don't know why. Uh, but so great stuff. Absolutely great stuff. You any questions? It's not over until Apple and Microsoft crashes. Well, Microsoft has done a fair bit of it. Apple, not so much. Uh, when do the Fed pivot? Absolutely. That's a, that's, a, that's a video title and a half, isn't it? You should write my headlines. Um, I suspect we've got a little bit of a way to go. One data point isn't enough. But it, the good thing here, it wasn't energy. So you can't blame the Russians for this. Um, and we were saying this was... Um, Goldman saying, if we get to 7 point something on the inflation, 7.7, we would get a 2% plus gain on the S&P 500. And I think they're probably broadly right on that one. JP Morgan were even more bullish on that. But let me have a look at the SPY, because SPX doesn't trade pre-market. It's up 2.8%. So yeah, massive exuberance on that. Let's wait till the real market opens. Uh, let's see if we are going to hit some of those. There is a core wall at 3,000, and uh, let me show it to you. So if you look at the options market, which is what I do all day long, not, not all day long, I do it for a couple of hours a week, there is a core wall at 3,900. So if we kind of head towards that, which is entirely possible to build today, we did that yesterday, um, you, you get, no, not yesterday, but you know, we did that previously here, uh, you get um, sales pressure up there it's just because the guys with all the calls unwind them they become sellers and the market kind of struggles to bounce through that so that's really what we need to get through to get on a proper kind of rally At the moment this is more of a feel good morning it's a feel good morning but it feels good doesn't it oh, it just feels very good now what does the fed say well yesterday we had loads of the fed lot talking again the, the boy band of fed presidents is, is, is on the run again on every news channel who will have them and Kashkari said, look, inflation is not being driven by wages, which always gives away what they're actually worried about. Uh, they're worried about wages. It's being caused by supply chain challenges, stimulus and Russia. Um, it wasn't them. It was nothing to do with the 40 percent of money they printed. It wasn't us. He said any talk of a pivot is premature and we don't know what the Fed will do. But he thinks they're on a good path now. So it's sort of like the usual language. Don't get too optimistic. Barking saying... Um, supply and other factors, again, being the key thing. He says we're on the back end of inflation and that's that it's coming down. So that's a little bit more positive for the market. Evans saying he's worried that much higher rates risk the Fed's job mandate. So basically it'll cause too much unemployment. And he's hopeful inflation will come down. I always say to my, my coaching students, if hope is part of your strategy, stop the trade, get out right now. Hope is not what you want. It's a bit like if you're on an aeroplane and the pilot comes on and says, we'll hope we'll have a smooth landing. Uh, we can't really be sure because the engine's on fire, right? You, you don't really want to hear that. So don't, don't be hopeful, please. Uh, Biden said he cannot guarantee 
that we're going to get rid of inflation. Um, if you get rid of inflation, you're really in trouble, Mr. President. Um, then you are in Japan. You have deflation. That's a completely different ballgame that you really don't want to be in. So, But he thinks we will have a soft landing. So he's your hopeful pilot, basically. Uh, then we got more um, U.S. Um, electioneering, of course. Uh, 12 uh, net house seats apparently picked up by Republicans. And um, still... Race is not called there. It's still going to take some time for that to adjust. But today, no one's going to care. Today, people are only going to look at this inflation number. But you also want to be looking at the crypto story. It's going to be somewhat washed out this morning by, by the exuberance, but it's still a big deal. Now, is crypto actually a Ponzi scheme? Well, Bankman Fried, or do you say Bankman Fried? I don't know. Uh, he said, um, he guess some... And obviously, you can always put a sort of put words to someone's mouth, uh, you know, afterwards. But they said, well, can you explain to me what crypto farming is? I mean, is it a bit like a structured put? You collect a premium or is there something more sophisticated? And he said, well, you start with a company that builds a box and then practice this box. They probably dress it up to look like a life changing, you know, world altering protocol that's going to replace all the big banks in 38 days or whatever. Maybe for now, actually ignore what it does or pretend it does, which isn't exactly the sort of language you want to hear, right? And then this is a Bloomberg transcript. You can look it up. And he said, look, if you're going to be a bit cynical about it, again, you've got this box. It's kind of dumb, but that's it, right? The box is worth zero, obviously. And you are now going to make everybody else think that this box is worth about a billion dollars. And that's what people are then pricing it at. So it sort of has a market cap. Everyone's going to mark to market. In fact, you can even finance this, right? And then he says, um, you could even just put some in there and take the money out and then you give the dollars back. You just get liquidated eventually. It's sort of like real monetizable stuff in some senses. And, you know, at some point, if the world never decides that we are wrong about this in like a coordinated way, right? Like you're kind of the guy calling and saying, no, this thing is actually worthless. But in one sense, are you right? Uh, so does that fill you with a load of confidence on crypto? Certainly doesn't fill me with any confidence. I mean, you could make the same argument for, say, gold, right? You could say, well, what's the intrinsic value in this shiny object? I, I sort of get it. Uh, all the big um, funds like Sequoia putting out this letter today saying we have written off our FTX investment, 150 million loss. Total shortfall at FTX is about $8 billion. So that money sort of evaporated. I also don't really understand how staking works, quite frankly. Who the heck is paying you 8, 9, 10, 12%? Like, who's doing that? Where does that money come from? Is that the Ponzi scheme? Does that just rely on more people putting in more money? I don't really know. If any of you know, please let me know. I'm a bit of a bit of an idiot on, on crypto. I own a little bit to keep me interested, but I don't really understand that. And who's in this? Well, Tiger Global, SoftBank, you know, the usual, the usual guys. But Temasek, Singaporean government body, I wouldn't have expected them to be honest, but there are. Now, thankfully, the stock market isn't that bothered about crypto because most of the Wall Street lot don't really fully understand it. And, and I'm, I'm in that boat. And so you have the volatility here yesterday actually coming down while crypto was tanking. So it doesn't cause any panic in the stock market or does it? Look at the correlation between Bitcoin and the S&P 500. There is definitely some correlation there, right? I mean, not strong correlation, but definitely some correlation. And why is that? Well, it's called a margin call. What happens if you are in margin on Bitcoin and it falls off the face of the earth? earth? Well, you have to sell it and you have to find some funds. So you're going to have to sell some stocks to find the funds. So there is a risk here, particularly in the kind of tech sector, the sort of archetype funds that a lot of crypto investors are also in um, of some serious volatility here. Uh, Zach says, okay, some 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 uh, use uh, transaction costs for the staking rewards. Okay, so it's like a profit share. It's like a, like a dividend in that case. Thank you very much on that. Um, some of you guys think it's a Ponzi scheme. Fluffing fluff, uh, iron condors. Uh, generally speaking, I would make them also 45 days long. I'd get out 21 days before expiration. Uh, otherwise, you get a lot of gamma risk, which is what you don't want. Um, 
Charlie Munger is the Bitcoin man for advice. Staking is weighted returns for the network maintenance where the amount you get based off the amount you stake serves the same purpose of mining. Okay, but what if everybody takes out their staking money in, into dollars? Say you did that, you know, say, say after a year, there's 12% extra coins there. How do you translate that into dollars? That's kind of the, the challenge I have with it, I guess. New up 10%? Um, yes. Amazing, right? I, I wasn't actually a big fan of the earnings. We come to that in a second. I'll, I'll tell you why. Now, the whole story that uh, Biden keeps pu pu pushing that the US consumer is strong. Well, the US consumer did something marvelous during COVID. They saved 33% of their income, which is absolutely fantastic. And I was hoping that they might, um, you know, read enough books. What's that guy called? Dave Ramsey. That's it. There's a book behind me by Dave Ramsey. I hope they you know, might have watched enough Dave Ramsey videos or something during COVID to kind of stay up there, but they're not. They're now at 3.1%. So basically the consumer is burning more cash than ever and credit card loans. Whoops. So the US consumer, unfortunately, isn't strong. The US consumer is starting to look a little bit like a Ponzi scheme too. So Neo earnings, you guys shouting out, okay, reactions to earnings are always a funny one, right? So they beat on revenue. Now, that's less important because we kind of know what revenue is because we know how many cars they've delivered. EPS was a miss. The guidance for Q4 is actually pretty soft, but I guess the market was expecting it to be even worse. So 43 to 48,000 deliveries, which sort of means 15 to 21,000 or so in November, December, which is better than before, but it isn't the guidance they gave us on the last call. So it's, it's a miss. And they are acknowledging that demand for the old models are weak. So what are they doing? They're basically pumping out lots of new models. And that's also why they're spending a lot of money. And that's why the margins are down. So fundamentally, from a numbers point of view, this doesn't look particularly good. But today, the market likes it, partially because Chinese uh, EV sales are stronger. And I guess there's still this opening rumor uh, running and making making the rounds. So we're up 9.4% here pre-market on Neo X, bang up 10%. So this is not a Neo story. This is a, this is a market story. Lucid's up 6%. Um, Holdstar is up 6%, Mullins up 6%, Tesla's up 5%. So this isn't a Neo's earnings were amazing story. And I think that's important to realize. I, I think the um, I think the numbers were disappointing, quite frankly. I, I would have hoped that they would do better, but it's not really, well, it's, it's not their fault, but it's, it's, it's COVID and supply chain. That, that's really the problem there. And that continues to be the problem. Uh, Illy, please get out of debt before you purchase our, our programs. Um, we've got tons of free stuff also on the website. Take advantage of that first. I really um, don't like to uh, have people join the course who, who, who are in debt. Um, get rid of the debt. Once you are ready to be rid of the debt, drop me an email, Illy, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll sort you out with, with, with access to the, to the programs because that's really the most important thing. Calls on a triple leveraged ETF. Kyle, 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 we've talked about this back away from the slot machine very, very carefully. And, and John, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much with you, with you on that. Um, don't, 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 don't aim for quick gains. It just ends in disaster. Uh, and Kyle, you, you knew what I was going to say, didn't you? <laughs> Um, Abdal Rahman, um, that's a wonderful name. You're quite right. This is macro, macro, macro. Macro is what controls the market today. Why? Because, well, we have these wonderful numbers in. Uh, we also have some firsts. We had the 56th decline of 1% or more in the SPX yesterday. So again, today's rally is a little bit more in perspective there. The most downside volatility we've seen since 2008. If you remember 2008, I do. I remember even 2000 as an investor, uh, you know, buckle up. Amazon uh, managed to lose a trillion dollars in value. They went from 1.88 trillion to just 0 0.87, although up 5% today, which is quite nice to see. But yeah, that's some money destruction there, right? And watch for the next couple of days, watch Bitcoin and the impact on tech stocks 
And look at the put call ratio here again. The weird thing is people don't buy hedging protection when the market's up. That's when you want to buy it. They buy it when the market's down. It's really peculiar, but that's what's going on there. It's an indicator again, the put call ratio of, of a little bit of panic out there. Uh, we are, however, making lots of money, uh, which is lovely to see. Uh, I did, I think, three trades yesterday. I shared them with you guys in the coaching community. We're up 111% so far this year. You can join us. How do you join us? Provided you have a five-figure portfolio and a head on your shoulders, uh, come and uh, join the coaching community. Go to felixfriends.org slash coaching. If you're just starting out, you're not quite there yet with a five, six, seven, eight, nine figure portfolio, then we also have you covered. We have a pre-recorded course, a hundred lectures. You get to watch me uh, trade live every week. So I, I'm literally do a live stream every week where you can see exactly how I implement our strategy, our protocol, and how you can learn from me and a bunch of amazing investment bankers, university lecturers who are part of our, our coaching team. Uh, go to phoenixfriends.org slash options and work your way through that. And, and you will start to understand the market on a completely different level. And I think it will make you a better and a smarter investor. So check it out. phoenixfriends.org slash coaching for the five figure and plus lot. And uh, anyone else just starting out, build that extra income stream. Work towards shedding that nine to five. It's just not fun, is it? I, I used to do it. I did never thought it was particularly fun. Um, VIX trade. Um, yeah, I, I know, but I, I literally, somebody asked me about something about the VIX trade and I clicked around with it and I wanted to see what it would cost to close it. And I double clicked and I closed the bloody trade and it executed in a second. So yes, unfortunately, I didn't make any money on that VIX trade. It probably lost me a little bit of money. Fat finger error happens sometimes. Of course, I let you guys know. It's always good to be honest with your idiocies. What did it cost me? Okay, it cost me $86, not the end of the world. Uh, you know, happens sometimes. Um, actually, Probably the first time that this year, at least, that I've done a done a a, a fat finger trade. Um, so yeah, be careful with what you're clicking on. Um, Salif, the uh, two year and ten year are down almost five percent. Thanks for sharing. We'll have a look at that in a second. And um, ten year under four percent again. Uh, did you get my email, Taekwon Lee? I haven't seen it, Taekwon Lee. Uh, let me have a look for it. Maybe it's in a spam folder or something. Um, I'll, I'll, I always aim to reply every single email. You're always very welcome to email me, guys. Fluffing Fluff says, thank you again for the master options course, Felix and friends. Up almost 150% and I will get on the coaching course once I'm done with the course. Brilliant. I look forward to having you in the coaching community as well and hoping you helping you smash those financial targets even more. Always a pleasure having you on here. I like your sense of humor too. Nasdaq up 4.1% uh, live trading today. Honestly, I've got like six coaching calls this afternoon. So I doubt that I'll, I'll be live streaming uh, live trading. Um, GMO, a uh, first, not quite. I don't think you're quite first. You may be the fifth, 500th. Although guys, we've got 87 likes and 500 people on the call. That means there are 415 very stingy people out there. Um, how about you hit that like button? Thank you, GM. I much appreciate it. Uh, that would be very wonderful. Let's get that up to at least a respectable number, 200 or something like that. Otherwise, the algorithm is going to think this guy puts out such terrible content. No one's ever willing to do anything. Let me see what, um, what um, just the adrenaline shoot shot the market needs, says my head coach. Logically seems bullish on all fronts. And yeah, we are absolutely flying a snapshot of what to expect, everything going up here. VIX minus 8% so far. That trade would have been really, really profitable. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Um, Corp, the guys are talking about setting up trades and hedging. So let's have a look at the pre-market. This is the pre-market. Isn't it glorious? Absolutely glorious. Pretty much everything is green. Very hard to find a tanking stock this morning. Apple up 3%. Nvidia up 5%. Uh, AVGO, 3.95%. Does that make anyone happy? It does because uh, we got a trade on it and it's bullish. <laughs> and so that's, that's going to be nice as the market opens. And um, by the way, we don't really rely on getting the direction right. The point of the trades we set up is that we can be right or wrong on the direction and still make money. Amazon up 5.5%, Visa up 3%, Mastercard up 3%, Tesla up 5%. So this is a proper squeeze upwards. And that's what we were saying yesterday, right? I think it was JP Morgan saying yesterday, the 
the the risk uh, or the pain trade is still the the upside squeeze and um yeah at some at some point if this if this continues to go up at this level here today then uh it squeezes all sorts of people and you you do get that bit of a short squeeze thing going on here so we are up here now we're at 3386 on the s SPY because that trades pre-market 3.26% up absolutely brilliant um GMO asking fluffing fluff uh, to share more on the on the um, on our pro course the master options program uh, I'd appreciate that Jay, it's been a while since I had my upside squeeze. J J J J J. Stay away from the leverage, guys. It's only going to hurt you. Um, really, it's really not worth it. December is a rally. Let's hope for it. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, hello, uh, very very kind of you. Stingy people indeed. Marcus Ong. We'll be at 150 likes. We're still still 250 people on the on the fence. Uh, I, I I don't really know why. Bodhi was excited. Did you get slapped down by by the? Um, uh, you know, you're talking about leverage. Yeah, like, it, it, leverage and stocks don't mix. It's just it hits you really hard when the market goes in the wrong direction. Now, the reason if you guys just joined that uh, we're up this morning is because we're up 111 percent on our portfolio. Isn't that exciting? That's actually not the reason we're up. But you can join our community by if you have a five, six, seven, eight, nine figure portfolio. Go to coaching to learn from me and my, my coaching team directly one-on-one. -on -one. If you're just starting out with your portfolio, go to options, join the course program here that um, Fluffing Fluff was talking about just now in, uh, in lovely tones. He's up 150%, which is pretty cool. So we, we, our whole thing is that we want you to be successful. We want you to actually make money. We want you to make an enormous return on the investments into the programs. And, um, and, and we give you a huge amount of support to actually for that, to make that happen. Now, this is why the market's up. If you've just woken up and you are staring dumbfoundedly at your portfolio, smashing it on the table going, why is this green? This device must be broken. No, inflation rate is at only 7.7%. And apparently in 2022, that's something to celebrate. So significantly below the 8 to 8.1% 8 we were expecting. Core inflation at 6.3, really dropping here very nicely. Core inflation month on month is half what it was last month. And core inflation strips out energy. So it strips out, you know, Putin and, and any other foreign foes you can blame for the cock-ups of printing 40% extra money because apparently that had nothing to do with the inflation we were experiencing. Jobless claims also up uh, rather unpleasant for the now almost one and a half million people unemployed. But um, the Fed likes it. They're basically planning a beach outing to the Hamptons as we speak. Helicopters are getting ready. Wicker baskets are being packed with caviar, champagne, and, and clams. And uh, they're about to descend onto a beach and, uh, and throw a little party. There'll be fireworks, all sorts of things. And they'll just be saying, we're so clever. We turned this around. Look at us. Uh, aren't, we, aren't we very, very, very smart people? And the market is applauding it. The market is absolutely loving it. And if you look at the bond market, as some of you clever people just told us, the 10-year bond yield is down 4% this morning. The two-year is 4.5% down. And we're sitting now at just 4.3% on the two-year, which is sort of the expectation of where interest rates go. So... What about the three and 10, two and five? So we, we are also almost getting rid of the inversions here. The two is now lower than the 10. That's not an inversion. So that means the, the recession risk is seen as significantly abating here this morning. Stefan, you're super kind. Stefan saying the course and the community are top notch. A special shout out to Guillermo from the options course. He really takes his time to help you and answer your questions. Absolutely. Guillermo is an absolute gem. And um, we actually promoted him yesterday to also be an accountability coach for our options community because he does such, a, such an amazing job on the master options program. Um, so, um, Stefan, when you were. Uh, 
when you come and come and join the uh, the coaching, you'll also get to see him there, and he'll be nudging you to make sure you are really on track with what you're doing. Uh, Flapping Fluff, thank you very much. I was saying the community of the program, the course is very helpful and friendly. Having myself not have done it sooner, um, or hating myself for not having done it sooner, precisely. It's almost the end of the year, right? And and so many people are like, yeah, this year I, well, did I really improve my investing skills? Right? Is therefore next year going to be better? Why would you take profits today? It says Maxim. Appreciate you being on the call, Maxim. Um, will the market not keep you going up for another week or so? So I have very simple exit rules. So once we hit that threshold, I just take the profit. I look for another trade. I set up something else. Um, it's not about hoping it's going to continue to go up. For me, it's just about realizing profits and then, you know, uh, getting there. Juicy green, absolutely. And then something up, 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 up. Um, and Kyle, precisely. See, coaching students, coaching, coaching students. This is what this community is becoming. I generally appreciate it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Fed party. Andrea, I can't put that on the screen. Uh, GMO, you're very kind. Could this be the bottom? It could be the bottom, but we don't really know. Fundamentally, it, it still depends on what the Fed does and whether the Fed changes the tune. Now, we do have one more set of inflation data out before the Fed meet in December because they're meeting on, I think, the 14th and inflation should come out on like the 10th or the 12th or something like that. So that's good. And that just means we have an opportunity to get, if we get two lower inflation readings in, in a row, brilliant but don't get too excited because do you remember the um inflation reading from a little bit earlier in the year this one we had one in april and that was a false positive remember that it's like you've got COVID. go in uh, and, and hide no it, it was a false positive uh, so is this a false positive well hopefully not but energy prices are creeping up again but it's the core number that we need to watch out for and we got a really nice really nice drop here you see that really 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 nice drop and, and that's what the market's excited about Darren saying the community is fantastic if you ask a question you'll have several people answering your questions uh, which is brilliant um thank you very much darren that's exactly what we hope to achieve we really want to support you in in the community uh, and, and we have two communities essentially we have the the coaching community for everybody on a sort of five six seven eight nine figure portfolio and um also for more intermediate and advanced traders and investors uh, check it out down below book a call with us have a chat with us and then for you guys just getting started which is honestly the most exciting place to be really it's a fantastic place to be let us help you build an extra income stream with tons of support my full trading protocol 100 lectures plus you get to see me trade live every week and so on go to felix ransalog slash options uh, links are also in the description down below jp is going to get himself hammered tonight yes probably santa claus rally uh, probably um possibly but it really depends on on the i think it's the 14th of december which is the the real fed meeting the, the the next one the big one uh, that's the big one that matters winston just joined me he's lying behind me i don't know if i can show him to you winston you want to be on camera winston winston come here sit up there he is you see superstar winston how are you doing how are you doing <laughs> so winston is excited you can tell right very excited that's what happens when you uh, spend the day in the woods um, that's what he does in the mornings. I move the camera up again a little bit, although I'm sure you'd rather see Winston than me, right? Um, someone's on the website um, from Romania asking about coaching. Is that one of you guys? Um, hopefully one of my team will pick that up. I think they just did. So if you have any questions, we always aim to answer them as quickly as humanly possible. Why am I in the middle of the screen? Here I am on the side of the screen. Much, much better. So let's have another look at, um, at the, the glory. Um, well, actually, let's look at what Bloomberg's headline makes of this, apart, apart from bashing that chap. U.S. inflation slows more than forecast, gives Fed downshift room. U.S. futures rocket as soft CPI boosts risk appetite market wrap. Uh, U.S. election still is sort of, you know, not quite sure what's happening there. Musk's first email to Twitter staff says, uh, come to the office or you're fired. JP Morgan's team says crypto markets face cascade of margin calls. And that would normally have dominated today, but this 
inflation rate is in so nice and low that the market is glowingly, glowingly red, uh, green, sorry. Uh, VIX is down 6%. I wish I hadn't closed that VIX trade by accident. That really was silly of me, wasn't it? Ah, well, uh, US dollar is down 1.44%. You might be thinking I'm making that up, by the way. I, I'm not. I'll show it to you. You might be thinking Felix is talking out of his backside. Look at that. I wrote here, I closed the, closed the VIX trade by accident. Um, oh, uh, I literally fat fingered that, that one. And it happens quite quite a bit. Actually, you guys can't see that, can you? It's underneath something. What is it underneath? Here we go. There you can see it. Um, anyway, it's there. So what does that mean? Everything is flying. Everything is green. Honestly, take some profits when the market opens. That's what I would do. Uh, might be a nice opportunity to rejig your portfolio positions a little bit if you've been feeling queasy about certain stocks that you're holding. These are the sort of opportunities that we get. Is it possible we go up more tomorrow? Of course it's possible. Is it possible we also revert back down? Also possible. So I always um, work on the, the risk side. Jade Lizard season. What's with the Jade Lizard obsession, Jay? They're pretty expensive to set up. And yeah, I'm not sure it's a... People do do them. It's true. Uh, Dex, you're very, very kind. Dex Invictus, another another Latin speaker. Uh, Winston's in a good mood. He is, actually. He's very happy. He's very happy. You know what he does every morning? He gets a, there's a sort of neighbor, neighborly puppy, sort of some sort of labradoodle thing. Um, he was very small when I first met him, and now he's as big as Winston, and he shows up every morning, and they go and, and, and play for an hour, chewing each other's ears and racing up and down. And then he comes back for a bit of a bit of a bite to eat, and then 15 minutes later, he goes back out um, into the forest with about a pack of 10 wild dogs, and they, they go nuts. And then he comes back, and then he curls up, usually next to me or on my bed, which he seems to have discovered as a really comfortable space to sleep. You could still get an extra little pop from elections, Kyle says. Possible, possible. Depends on how they come in, really. But it's that's kind of an unknown, right? So I'd rather work with what I know. Do you like back ratio spreads? Occasionally. Yeah, sounds like a fairly uh, personal question. <laughs> Kidding, Alejandro. Um, yeah, they, they have their place, for sure. CPI was lower. Indeed, Caleb, it is a green morning. Everything is green this morning. Put on your sunglasses. Uh, Marcus says, can we go on a bull run even as demand is destroyed? And you have a point. So basically, in the longer term, if we go into this recession and interest rates stay higher for longer, the people will eventually realize that demand being crushed does lower earnings. So that's why I'm saying I don't see this rally really lasting like for a while. But I think we're going to get a nice little boost here. Uh, expect Chubby Winston knows all the answers. He does. He does. Uh, Labradoodle, yeah, that, that's that's a half noodle and half a Labrador. No, they, a poodle Labrador. It, it, I don't know if that's what he is. He's something like that. He's sort of like large and and curly <laughs> and white and very sweet. What do you make of the disappointing margin rates on Neo? Disappointing indeed, because not because of the number. But because they told us the margin, the vehicle margins would improve on the last call. And when management tells you something and then it doesn't happen, I really don't like that. I really don't like that. I like, I like my management to be pessimists and to kind of like slightly sandbag me and then surprise me. But when they disappoint me, I'm like, hmm, what are they going to disappoint me on next quarter? That's the way I'm, I'm, I'm wired. If the risk is defined, why is leverage terrible? Um, yeah, risk defined is much better, absolutely. I mean, options are inherently leveraged, uh, but they're very much risk defined and you can very much set proper risk management. I'm not a big fan of people buying or selling triple something ETFs. Like in stocks, leverage is not really a place you want to be in. Higher cost of batteries, indeed, for Neo, but they did tell us that that would that would abate, right? They said the margins will improve because the pricing would would help, but it hasn't. Is margin out of their hands? Well, do you think Apple's margin is out of Apple's hands? Apple doesn't really make anything. Tarek, 
absolutely. Sir Winston worked very hard to improve the macro conditions. He's snoozing behind me. He looks absolutely shattered. He's had a really, really tough day. Horizon, appreciate the extra color there on the on the Neo battery margins. I, I don't think the figure in itself is the issue. I think it's more the last guidance was that in this quarter, things would improve in terms of margins, and they haven't. That's why I'm a little bit like, hmm, you know, at what point will they? That's that's really the, the, the big question here. No, I think, hello, I think... You're basically saying, if you know, if you don't make your own product, are your margins out of your hands? No, it's a, it's a joint venture. They have a lot of control. They know they know the input costs. They do all the buying largely themselves, you know, of, of batteries and components, and and well, they build their own motors and, and and powertrains and so on, and and they actually assemble their own batteries as well, right? It's just the, the components that they that they buy in. So no, they do have control of that, and of course they also have control over their pricing. So they do have essentially control of their margin. They know what their production costs are. It's just the continued supply chain issues are, are, are basically hampering them. And, and the continued high cost of batteries, battery components is, is hampering them. Uh, so is that a management issue? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say that is within their control. Winston deserves his own channel. Absolutely. It'd be, it'd be, a, be a highly um, highly entertaining channel. It'd be Winston eating, Winston sleeping, and Winston running around and chasing and chewing ears. I need a Neo logo. Uh, Winston, our hero. You guys are very kind. Um, Jay, absolutely. You suggested that before, that channel. That is undoubtedly a, a winner. <laughs> I should I should make a Winston channel, shouldn't I? I mean, let, let's get him on the screen again here. Uh, hang on. Let me move that. Let me move that banner somewhere. Here, here we go. Winston, come on. Make a little appearance. Winston, come on. Sit up, my darling. Come on. There he is. Sit down. Hang on. You can't see him. There he is. Winston in all his glory. Any any thoughts on inflation today? I think he's relieved it's lower. <laughs> oh, Winston. You're having a nice day. You're having a nice morning. Mm -hmm. You want to go to sleep? All right. Uh, there he is, guys. All right. Brilliant. So lovely green morning. I hope you enjoy it as much as I will, because I'm going to take some profits, hopefully, in the next half hour or so. Maybe I'll wait a little bit longer, see what the market reaction is. And then I'll probably look for some more trades later today. I'll ping you guys who are on the, on the coaching community at the very least. And I think we'll do a live trading session tomorrow. So come and join us. How do you join us on those? Well, simply Book a call with us down below at felixfriends.org slash coaching. I wouldn't want to be blocking out Winston now, would I? And um, we'll talk you through it, answer all your questions, how you can learn from, from Winston, all his wisdoms, his years of trading, his trading protocol, his strategy, how Winston has made 111% so far this year. And uh, give us a ring, felixfriends.org slash coaching. I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you very much. Thanks for smashing the like button on the way out. It gives the algorithm an enormous boost to tell them that Winston is the smartest hound in the world. And I hope to see you live tomorrow.